Combien? Combien? Combien du temps? Yeah, you don't really have a hope there. You've got a mumbling southern gentleman trying to sing a bit of French. I mean, there's no way that um, you were going to get any of that. Um, so well done, anyway. <laughs> Hey everybody out there, welcome back to another episode of the Audio Files. It's Andy, it's John, and it's time. It's time for some damn music. So, John, you're going to be offering me something to go off and listen to. What do you have in store, my friend? So, as we eke out the final installment of that jazz funk odyssey, that is R.E.M., the IRS years. I've yeah. changed. It is and then gone to another compilation album. Um, eponymous, uh, from which I have up to the track talk about the passion okay all right well um i'm always happy to go back to the rem well i've enjoyed uh much all of what we've listened to to varying degrees uh still think the last one was my favorite uh the odd fellows 151 um but they've all been quite enjoyable in their own right so I'm eager to go check this out. Um, I hope this isn't the end of REM in general on our channel. Um, but uh, yeah, let me go check out Talk About the Passion, and I will let you know what I think of it. My goodness, yeah, that that twang jangly guitar that we're so used to hearing uh from Mr. Buck, uh, that is so crisp and clean sounding. Um, and it's just got this perfect amount of like metallic nature to its tone. Um yeah, you can almost hear just a first couple notes and you know who you're listening to. And I love the little picking portions through it as well. Um, let's take that back to the beginning here. drum roll to enter the chorus. Combien? How how much? How many? I don't know. Something like that. I don't speak French. I know very little. Um, but that sounded oh. like it to me. Uh, I loved that last bit, that portion. Uh, let's take that back a little bit too. Mm, a lot of taking things back, but hey. Come in, come in, come in, 
Oh, those harmonies are nice. This is so pretty. Actually, the guitar during this part, not the music, just the tone of it, like its brightness, uh, reminds me of like, Here Comes the Sun. It's sort of what Harrison's guitar sounded like in that, in, in its tone, not, again, not the music. But yeah, really, really interesting. Um, empty Prayer? Empty Mouth? Something like that? Did I catch that too? I don't know. John's going to help me out on this one, but I'm wondering what Stipe is focusing on from a lyrical standpoint and the meaning therein. Oh, this guitar is so pretty. Is that like violin or something? Sounds like bow on string. Another fade out, huh? Yeah, that was a really pretty song, especially the, the brightness. And the music uh, of the guitar, uh, really, really lovely. I, I'm interested. It has this like hopeful or uplifting kind of sound musically, but I'm wondering some of the lyrics that I caught sounded a little bit more stinging. Um, and I'm wondering what his focus is again, as I mentioned before, and John can help me out with that. But yeah, very, very bright, very at times jangly. Uh, which, I mean, sort of the kings of jangle pop, jangle rock, uh, are REM. So that, <laughs> that checks out. Like I said, just two notes into the song and I, it, you could hear who was playing and you, you could know who was playing. Um, I enjoyed the song. I didn't enjoy it as much as I enjoyed the Odd Fellows 151. That's probably my favorite of this sort of, um, REM journey that John has taken me on of their earlier stuff. Um, but yeah, it's hard not to find uh, redeeming qualities in the music that they were creating during this era. And there are plenty of things that are enjoyable about this one. Um, so let's get back to John and discuss it. Stan asked me a nail, he's back. So you listen to talk about the passion. What yes. do you think? Um, okay, so it starts off, and we're like just a couple seconds into this, and I can tell you already that I'm hearing Peter Buck on guitar. Like, that twang jangly guitar that is so quintessentially R.E.M. shines through, and you just know it when you hear it, what you're listening to. Even if there was no introduction to this episode, and I just hit play on a on a link uh, blindly, I would have known what I was in the midst of here. Uh, and it's really pretty and it grabs my attention. Um, his picking through the notes of this progression is lovely and it gives the tune this kind of swirling like feeling as the notes are combed over with such even fluidity. And just as Stipe delivers for this um, for the second time this line, 
not everyone can carry the weight of the world. Uh, Barry quickly wraps the snare uh, and that heralds in the refrain. That is also the title of the track. Um, but it is rather short lived, though, and only delivered twice before shifting back into the verse motif from earlier. And interesting lyrics are caught during the second verse where Stipe mentions empty prayer and empty mouths, uh, I believe. Um, but then he delivers some lyrics toward the end of this verse. And I speak very little French, but know just enough of of it that it sounds like he's asking like either how much or how many, I think. Um, is it combien, combien, uh, that phrase? Uh, so I caught that and I think I caught it a, a few times, uh, throughout, uh, the song. Yeah. Um, but I don't know exactly what he's saying with all of this. Uh, but we got, we get back into the chorus again. And at this point I have this epiphany of what the guitar sound and tone is reminiscent of. And that is to me, it sounds a bit at parts, not the music, but just the tone of the guitar, Reminds me of um, Harrison's guitar on Here Comes the Sun. Um, it's got this bright feel to it. Um, and that... Da -da 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 -da, and it just has a little bit of that to it. And it just stuck, stuck out to me. Um, after the chorus... I, sorry, yeah, Andy. I, I, believe, I believe they're both Rickenbackers. That'll be something to do with it. Could be very well something to do with it. Yeah, that are probably tuned to the same levels on the knobs and everything. And has just the inherent Rick sound. Uh, but yeah, it stood out to me. And I, and I love that actually. I love that little Easter egg, even if it's just me that hears it. Um, so after the chorus, Stipe repeats that French bit, uh, uh, over more of the, like that really gorgeous twangy bright guitar. And the song then comes back to the refrain or the chorus, uh, on repeat. And I think I'm catching at this point towards the very end of the song, sort of these, what sounds like to me, but I'm not sure if it is, I'm not, I'm not a hundred percent convinced, but it's what it sounds like to me. Almost these touches of like orchestral bits, like bow strokes over strings or something like that toward the very end uh, as it's fading out. And I thought that was really intriguing and wondered what exactly that was. The bright tones of this song gave it hope, but the lyrics had some sting in them with references to empty mouths and empty prayers um and is pleading that we talk about the passion and i'm interested to know what that what the song is about specifically um if you know or if it you know if that knowledge is you know public and out there i have to say that while i enjoyed this song it was it was a good song that there is um and there's plenty about it that's pleasing to the ears but it's still not my favorite rem song that we've covered on the channel i think that's going to remain the odd fellows one five one or one fifty one song that we that we listened to. I just love the the story of that tune, and um, I know it says odd fellows, but just the odd the odd nature of the tale being told there anyway. Um, so yeah, this was a lot of fun. Beautiful bright guitar tones. Um, also, some really nice harmonization. I would assume by Mills um on the like higher pitched oh, like sort of that airy kind of um delivery sounded really great his bass work was really good um the drumming was was fabulous on this uh so yeah i i enjoyed the song a lot just not as much as odd fellows fair enough fair enough so as i said this is from eponymous which was the last output from the irs um, it's, it's a it's a fairly decent compilation of what you might call their greatest hits. Uh, they didn't really have any with IRS, um, but you know it's a good representation. There's a few little alternative versions and stuff, so it's a good representation of their work, the record label. Um, not to belabor the point, we've gone through loads of stuff about REM, but just for anyone out there who doesn't know, um, Michael Stipe vocals, Peter Buck guitar. Um, my Mills plays and backing vocals, Bill Berry drums, backing vocals. So yeah, this album's really interesting. So I'll go through the tracks because if you look at Greatest Hit, it's interesting how many of these I chose for my little Greatest Hits are REM, which is 
Um, <laughs> <laughs> and this one, obviously, which I had to pick from this album. So you got Free Europe, which is the original <laughs> first single. Um, it's the original Hebtone single version. Um, the song re-recorded again appears on Murmur. It sounds very much the first single done on the cheap, this version, but it's charming. And then Gardening at Night, the next one, which appears on Chronic Town. This is a different vocal mix where you can actually hear every fifth word. So it's a real <laughs> breakthrough. Because, um, you, I mean, the original guy at night, you cannot hear a goddamn thing. I don't know why he was um, singing with a, with a massive um, um, spoonful of mash in his gob at the time. But <laughs> that's it, you know. Um, and then this song, which again appears from Murmur as well. And now this song, I do love this song. And it's that quintessential, really early REM sound that has, um, it's pretty more than anything. Mm-hmm. It's just so pretty. And that's what sort of wins you over. And it's, it Murmur's just such a great, great album. And you pick any track off there. And then South Central Rain from Reckoning, which you know the song already, and it's one of the sort of more often of the early songs that's sung. And then Don't don't Go Back To, brackets, Rockville from Reckoning, which is another great sort of barnstormer. Can't Get There From Here, Fables of Reconstruction, that's with the horns in it, quite funky. Driver 8 from Fables, which is another really interesting song. Um, then Romance, which was like a one-off song they did for um, a film, 1987 film called Made in Heaven, and it's on the soundtrack. Um, not necessarily much, to be honest with you. It's not one of the best ones. And then Fall on Me from Life's Expansion, which you listened to, which I put forward. That's the only one out of all these that I did pick. And then three really familiar songs from most people, I think. One of Finest Work song. Mutual drum horn mix, and it's the end of the world as we know it. Brackets and I feel fine from yeah. all three from Document, which again is that sort of college rock breakthrough into almost you know, radio play, definitely college radio play. But so uh, yeah, so and that's and that's nice my little... my genesis point with REM is kind of that era of, and and onward. So it... yeah, yeah. So I will go through the uh, lyrics of the song. Empty prayer, empty mouths, copy and reaction. Empty prayer, empty mouths talk about the passion. Not everyone can carry the weight of the world. Not everyone can carry the weight of the world. Talk about the passion, talk about the passion. Empty prayer, empty mouths, copy and reaction. Empty prayer, empty mouths talk about the passion. Copy and, copy and, copy and, yeah, you don't really have a hope there. You've got a mumbling southern gentleman trying to sing a bit of French. I mean, there's no way that um, you were going to get any of that. Um, <laughs> so well done, anyway. Talk about the passion. Talk about the passion. Not everyone can carry the weight of the world. Not everyone can carry the weight of the world. Combien, 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 du tout. Talk about the passion. I've been for night to the end. So, yeah, um, this was the second single released from Murmur. And... Bell to chart. Uh, surprise, surprise. <laughs> and, uh, Michael Stipe has stated that Talk About the Passion was a hunger song in the liner notes of Eponymous. Yeah. Um, but apparently the lyrics were not clear enough. Imagine that. Um, <laughs> with the only direct reference in the song being to Empty Mouths. So a video was made for this um, in 1988, part of a separate project. And it made the meaning of this song more explicit, showing images of homeless people mm. and images of an aircraft carrier, ending with the caption, in 1987, the cost of one destroyer-class warship was $910 million. So he's, he's pretty much um, put, put it out there. Um, interesting, you picked on this slightly. An uncredited female cellist plays on the song. Ah, cello. Um, according okay. to... Yeah, so Mr. Let's Active, um, he said, this woman from Charlotte who played in the symphony down there was somebody at the, was somebody at the studio knew and just played long, but they didn't catch her name, um, which is nice. <laughs> <laughs> and interestingly as well, this song, um, this is the first time they've done it completely. They've never played it live before. And he says, uh, Peter Buck said, we'd never played it the whole way through before. And we did it this time. It was just a rehearsal take. And Mitch Easter said, yeah, that's fine. Move on. 
Um, so that's the song. <laughs> there you um, go. Take. Yeah, it just has it just has a great deal of charm. And I would say of those picking a song off this, just off this, it would it would be well, it is the one I picked, you know, mm-hmm. because of that um, that charm. But I think. I mean, Murmur, you can throw a dart and hit any song on there. I just think they're all brilliant. It's yeah. such a good album. Um, so that brings us to the end yeah. of our Jazz Funk Odyssey. And we have yeah. covered all the IRS studio albums that R.E.M. done, one EP and two compilations. Um, just to recap the songs that we've done, Carnival of Swords, Box Cars uh, from Chronic Town, uh, Perfect Circle from Murmur, Let Them Never Send um, from Fables, uh, sorry from Reckoning. Um, Life and Living from Fables, Follow Me from Luscious Pageant, Voice of Harold, Dead Letter Office, Odd Fellows, Local 151, Document, I talk about that. So there you go. Yeah. All yeah. very good ones. And, and you know, underrated in that is, is Voice of Harold is probably the, my second favorite because so weird. Uh, what inspired yeah. that song and then just Stipe's delivery throughout it is, is terrific as well. Um, yeah. Well, let's not let this be the end of REM on this channel. I mean, we could always, I'm sure there's other material from that era, yeah. perhaps even some that I'm not familiar with that did come out after I had listened to some REM. So, you know, um, they're a great band and are um, kind of pioneers in their own niche um, and and probably warrant uh, more listening to um, and, you know, exposure and being talked about. These guys are kind of the kings uh, or godfathers of this jangle pop, you know, jangle rock sort of phenomenon that happened way back when. So um, I'd be interested to hear more from them if you've got it and something tells me you do. Yeah, there's a few B-sides which are really interesting as well, some cover versions which are great. Oh. Um, all joking aside, I would say, you know, mid eighties, there's two bands that are really important to me. Um, and they are the Smiths and REM. Uh-huh. Really, really close to heart. And we discussed this before. They're like the cousins, their guitar sounds of each other as well. Yeah. And they spawned all these bands on both sides of the Atlantic as well. They really are both incredible bands, you know, and, and Peter Buck, um, it's just a great, great guitarist. And there was, again, it's that time as well when I started getting into them, there was that mystique about these mumbling fools from somewhere called Georgia, you know, Athens in Georgia. And you couldn't really find out all this stuff about them. So when you saw a magazine that had like a page and a half interview with them, you'd get it and scour it for a bit more detail about mm-hmm. who these people are and, and why he's always wearing a waistcoat and you know, stuff like that. Um and it was just the the mystique and the in, intrigue that sort of drew you in as well. It's like you can find out what they just you know had for breakfast and what they've shut out and how much you know on the internet nowadays. It's, it's a bit depressing <laughs> that way, you know. Yeah, yeah. As someone yeah. once said, you know, no more heroes anymore. But anyway, that's another story. Um, so I will wrap things up <laughs> and say thanks to this, this Andy, Thank folks you. out there. Tell us what you think of this. Beautiful, charming song. Um, hit the like button if you like it, please do. And um, drop some comments about our Jazz Folk Odyssey. I will add this to the playlist I've created. So we have a nice long list of REM songs for you to pile through if that is your thing. Um, if you haven't subscribed already, please do. Um, otherwise, the uh, the monkey gets it. And... Um, We do really appreciate everybody who supports the channel. (laughs) That being said, thanks so much for watching. I'll see all of you on the next episode of The Audio Files. We'll see you later, guys.